Adam and Eve. But he, pun- but he also punished them with a promise. And the promise was this. The seed of the woman will crush your head. And you shall bruise his heel. And so, for that to happen, there had to be a heel. This hymn in particular is every argument we ever need for the right to life. The birth of the Savior. It's the only argument that we ever need. Because there was a time for nine months that God Himself was being knitted in the womb of a woman. Just think about it. The God who created all things, heaven and earth, separated water from land, all animals, even these wonderful children that we have singing today. The glories of Christ Himself. That God that same almighty God was in the womb. That same God was vulnerable. Was defenseless. Can you imagine that? A defenseless God? Only womb to protect Him. When Oliver was in Ashley's womb, we went to this, I can't remember the name of the place, but it's one of those places where you do the sonogram and you can tell what the sex of the child is. And they offered this little service where they put the little microphone right over his heart. And then they record his heartbeat. And then they, tend, and then they re- take that recorder and they put it in a stuffed animal. And so at any time, I can walk into Oliver's room. Well, I mean, I can walk to Oliver now. But I can walk into Oliver's room and press that little stuffed animal. And I can hear Oliver's heart beating when he was in the womb of his mother. That means the world to me. And I can't imagine what it would be like for the son of the living God's little heart to beat that quickly. It's so fast. It was so quick. And to think of the Christ child in that sense, as if you could hold the Christ child to your ear, and hear his little heart beating so fast. St. Augustine tells us that truth has arisen from the earth, the flesh from Mary, and justice looked down from heaven. For man can receive nothing it has been, that has, that has, unless it has been given from heaven. The truth has arisen from earth. Now what does that mean? What does it mean to have arisen from the earth? It means from that which we were born. We were made. Dust to dust, ashes to ashes. We were made from the clay. And Christ became the clay. He he came into the womb. And his heel was created and it was thickened. It was prepared for nine months and then for 33 years for the serpent to strike and for his heel to crush. That little heart that you could hold the babe to, much like Simeon did, and hear that little heartbeat so fast would stop. 
one day it would stop. And that little Christ child who spent nine days or nine months in the womb would spend three days in a completely different kind of womb. We call it a tomb. That little heart, that sacred heart that was knitted together in the womb of Mary would upon the cross stop beating altogether. And then we have to ask ourselves the hardest question of all. Would you have stopped it if you could have? Isn't that the hardest question? If you could have stopped Christ from dying, would you have? And the answer is the same answer as his mother. No. You couldn't and you can't because the beginning and the end of all time, all history is all centered around the cross. When that heart, that little fast beating heart, stopped. All time and space revolve around that moment. And the angel Gabriel came down and as soon as he spoke those words to Mary, she was made with child. And that child was born to die. So the wonder of wonders and the marvel of marvels is that what was held inside of Mary's body was the Christ child that was made flesh for the forgiveness of our sins. But also, we do a disservice to her if we forget that she was a grieving mother. Let's not do a disservice to the mother of our Lord. She was a grieving mother. And because she was a grieving mother, and because she watched her son die, even while being mocked, we can now say, we too have seen, we too have grieved, and we too have salvation. Because there's one little thing that I didn't note about the little Christ in the womb. Mary wasn't just making a child. She wasn't even just making a God-man. She was carrying an inside of her her own salvation. Think about that. Carrying inside of her her own salvation. And so when I look at these little ones and I see how hard they have worked to learn this, this very difficult service, it's not an exercise in futility. It's a sung confession from these children of who Christ is and what Christ has done. These children are Augustana as we are. And if we do not teach them that all time and space revolve around that Christ child, then we've failed. And I refuse it. We have with us today someone with child. And it's almost as if you love what you've never seen. That's also true for Jesus. Your eyes have, have laid upon Him here at the altar. But you have not yet stood face to face to see His glory. 
but you will. When the birth pains of this life is over, they will be completely forgotten and we will stand face to face with Jesus Christ our Lord and He will say, well done, good and faithful servants. Come into the love and the behold and the tenderness of your Master. The One who would die for you and reign for you on the cross. For each and every one of these children. And for that child, too. And for that child. And for that child. And for all of His children. And I'm glad to be included in that. Proud to be included in that family. For now, we, while we await the blessed advent of Christ, we now know that Christ is in utero. So rest well, dear Mary. Rest well, dear Christians. Be calm. Be at rest. Because the sacred heart beats. The sacred heart of our Lord beats today. He is not dead. That little heart that beats so fast beats today in His resurrection. And with every beat it calls out your name for you are baptized into Him. Thanks be to God. Amen.